Annyeong. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> That's so dumb. Anyway, hi guys. <laughs> uh, before we really get started into I Have Notes, the show, I uh, want to give a shout out to our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Why haven't you gotten a, a VPN yet? Go to expressvpn.com slash rttv and go get one. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you guys want to join us in chat, create a free Rooster Teeth account. Uh, I have my chat window up here, so I will be seeing everyone's comments. So be appropriate and love us fully. <laughs> um, <laughs> or not. No more, no, no less. Please. No more, no less. <laughs> Just the appropriate Just amount. Just the appropriate amount. Uh, I wanted to also shout out to Wrestling uh, with the Week, premiering January 18th with James Willems and Scorpio Sky. It's about wrestling. It's neat. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> welcome to the show, I Have Notes, a show where Woo! we talk about everything or all things animation, creative, real estate, and Pedro Pascal. I am your oh. host, Issa Vettiola. <laughs> And with me today is surprise, but not surprise, but always a good surprise, Erin Wynn. Hey, it's me, hey. not Carrie. <laughs> Taking the Carrie spot. Oh, yeah. Um, another surprise, a Big Bang Yang surprise, it's Barbara oh. Dunkelman. Oh, <laughs> Big Bang Yang surprise, Big I like Bang. that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and a pleasant surprise, but like the kind where you get a weighted blanket for Christmas, it's Hannah McCarthy. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, I, I want to be a weighted blanket. Like <laughs> you the are the ideal kind of person. I like that. It? Yeah. yeah, it's a really good present. I never yeah. got one, but I just want to put that out there. That it's a, it's probably a really great present. We gotta get you one. No, they're so nice. That. They are. Good. Definitely. You know what I started doing recently in lieu of a, a weighted blanket because I like sleeping with the weighted blanket on me, but mm. it, it could get a little warm and you could mm. like shuffle around a little. I started yeah. putting another pillow on top of the comforter by my feet so my feet feel oh. kind of weighed down oh. and it's really cozy yeah. Ooh. Like innovation it. i yeah. like it <laughs> smells like compression socks without the socks <laughs> yeah, exactly true. yeah compression feet yeah. <laughs> upper <laughs> leg depending on how big your pillow is <laughs> have you guys ever tried compression socks i don't think i ever did no mm-hmm. i keep I'm getting that stage of old it, yet yeah <laughs> what do i do it's I circulation the technology and it's supposed to help with yeah. like s- some people get swelling oh, on their yeah. calves and like lower oh. kind of legs um oh. i know like m- i think my mom and my gr- i'm sure my grandparents have worn them before <laughs> they're just like very tight socks okay. yeah <laughs> the, yeah the times i've heard them mentioned are like pregnancy and when you're on airplanes oh, is that right interesting, interesting. Oh, i think yeah, okay that was educational. Thank you. I learned something today. <laughs> Even though I have like a huge question mark at the end of both yeah. of I'm like, let me. I think it. I'll believe anything if you say yeah. that. Yeah, same, <laughs> same. Absolutely. It, life is all about confidence and saying mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. with confidence and then people will just be like, well, I mean, sure. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be true then. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, um, like I said, guys, I'm checking out on at chat, and uh, we got a we got a cool cast here today. Not just us, ladies. Ooh, ladies. Um, ladies. I see uh, Caesars in there asking, <gasps> "What did Pedro? What, what about Pedro? What did I oh miss? my Don't gosh?" Worry. <laughs> Don't worry about it, um, Andre is in there. Hi, Andre. Um, so is Noel Wiggins. He calls us the most talented cast I've ever seen. Noel, I like how so you're sweet. you're shouting out the people we work with and not like the fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Sorry, guys. <laughs> also, all the, the listeners and viewers, of course. It's true. Yes. Look, uh, um, I, uh, I was, I'm trying to find a word for it. It's like um, someone I see frequently, Wheel for Speed, shout out to you. Yeah. <laughs> the regulars. It's true. Hodglet. Hodglet, nice yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see Toe in there as well. Hi, Toe! <gasps> toe! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, toe last week asked for more tips from DLR. <laughs> Ooh. It was pretty fun. So, hi, guys. How is everyone? How was your weekend? Did you do anything fun? Ooh. Well, it was a three-day lot. weekend. It so was a three-day nice. weekend. Yes. Um, I bought a lot of plants. That's how I'm Ooh. coping. Um, oh, no. Just Hannah. with life in general. Yeah. <laughs> not You're a probably, at that stage. Yes, very much. Um, I had asked a while ago for people's recommendations on plants that I'm not likely to murder. Um, 
and there's a lot of great recommendations. And so I went and I got a bunch of plants. I don't have a lot of natural light in my apartment, so already off to a bad start. Ooh, relatable. Um, so <laughs> trying my best, but I've got like a little section over here in my apartment that is now very green, and I, I like that a lot. Mm. Um, so oh. please send good vibes for my plants because <laughs> there it's an uphill battle for them moving forward. <laughs> Yeah, the vibes. Sending the vibes. Vibe. Thank you. <laughs> plant vibes. We're gonna cut them. back to you in like two months from now, oh. and you're just gonna be oh. surrounded by plants. You're it's, gonna like, yeah, all your whole style is gonna have changed. You're gonna, one or you're it's be one with yeah. nature, baby. One end of this, it will either be the saddest pile of just brown, decayed <laughs> failure, or I will have gone full like poison ivy, and I'm like. <laughs> This is my life now. Um, like a so. cottagecore villain. Ooh, yes. Oh, that's an interesting. Yeah. <laughs> cottagecore villain. I need that to be in some show now. Cottagecore oh does sound like a villain name. I love that. Cottagecore. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hello. I have this mm-hmm. problem where I forget everything I've done <laughs> over the, the weekend, previous <laughs> days before this current one. Like someone's like, "What did you do this weekend?" And I'm like, "What." did i do this weekend? oh yeah <laughs> yeah and i have to like because like i don't know about you guys i live by my google calendar i yes. have oh, for yes. like many years at this point where i'm just like also sorry my light's flickering a little bit um <laughs> i forget everything i do in days past unless it's on my calendar hmm. but i just looked at my calendar and i happened to put stuff on it this weekend i did some streaming with people this weekend Ooh. Oh, nice. Ooh. played some among us played some clue um, a couple weekends ago, we played Project Winter for the first time, which was really nice. fun. I don't know if you guys oh, have yeah, played I caught, yeah, I caught a little bit of that, yeah. Yeah, me too, mm-hmm. actually. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> you got some fans here, Barbara. A <laughs> hole. Oh, you got to watch me play. We're fans. I'm nervous now. <laughs> oh, God, what but, did uh, I do? Yeah. I think I, I just kind of, like, chill on the weekends. And yeah. then once the week starts, I just kind of just, like, brain dump everything. I don't know. That's valid. Yeah, yeah. I think that is valid. Same. Mostly, like just relaxing and like vegetating. Um, mm-hmm. And then I've been working <laughs> on a live two D character for somebody. Uh, so that's Ooh. been an interesting challenge. Yeah, I won't say who because I don't know if they want me to reveal that. But yeah, that's is it a Ooh. is it a cottage core villain? God, <laughs> maybe the next one. <laughs> oh. Somebody yeah, wants I'm to, gonna have to commission me to do. I'm one. gonna have to commission <laughs> that. <Tana>. <laughs> I love it. We can workshop it together. Yes. I love that. <laughs> Isa, how um, was your weekend? It was good. Um, uh, my SO got a Persona 5 Royal, so we've Ooh. been playing. He's He's been playing through that, and uh, Persona Persona games or Persona 5 specifically is kind of just your classic 100 hour game. So, yes. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going through it, just like mm-hmm. relaxing and stuff. Um, I finished. A uh, game I previously mentioned called Dicey Dungeon. It's on the. <gasps> it was, I finished the Switch port. It's really fun. Yeah. Um, I finished it, which was really great. And so now I'm playing another game that's kind of like similar to it, which um, my Ezo and I often have a lot of discussions, kind of like talking about game design or what makes a game really interesting. Um, so that's kind of the kind of stuff I look forward to, just kind of like relaxing and playing on my mm-hmm. Switch uh, while they're while he's playing um, Persona Five. So it's been nice, but. Um, I wanted to bring up that, uh, uh, Bravo, because you mentioned you live off of your um, Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. That was me for like the last quarter of last year until I was like, fine, it's 2021. I'm I'm gonna journal again. I swear to God. So smart. Yeah, I got my got my journal. Is it like a bullet journal or like how are you how are you organizing it? It is a bullet journal. Yeah, I'm I'm into that stuff. So I did a. Oh, I hope the camera blurs it out. But um, oh, I have like just, a just shake it really fast so to make it. Yeah, shake just it move it around. Some <laughs> Do some of this. This is my Do journal. Some that Someone's gonna it. stabilize it and try to like check for like DLR spoilers or something. Yeah, he's like, oh god. <laughs> but um, I found this cool spread that's like, oh, you can Ooh. like uh, fold it over and it says like Saturday and Sunday and stuff. So it's pretty oh, neat. Smart. Smart. Just fold it, fold it like that. Have you found? I know we're only like two weeks and change into 2021, but have you found it helpful? Yes, I always like journaling. I think last year, though, there was this, um, I had this uh, interesting, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess kind of, it's not really, I guess it's like a discussion with myself or being mm. introspective because quarantine, um, that there's like time I want to spend doing other stuff that uh, I'm still kind of adjusting to having a significant other 
Mm. Um, mm. So there's so many things that I did while I was single for myself that um, having an SO, I was like, oh, I do want to spend a lot of time with them. But that does mean I don't get to spend as much time doing these other things that brought me joy. So uh, it was kind of like not scheduling those things out, but just giving myself that, that time back as well. So, uh, yeah, we've been we've talked about it and they um, my SO enjoys me doing my stuff. So <laughs> that's <laughs> so important. Yeah. For any relationship <laughs> like that was something yeah. that, um, you know, Trevor and I have lived together now for about two years. And before that, I'd never lived with anybody. I was like, mm. always had my own place. I loved Whoa. it. I was like, I do whatever I want, eat <laughs> whatever I want. Independent woman. Yeah, yeah. Buy whatever I <laughs> Don't want. Don't need no man. <laughs> not that, not that I, we can't do that, you know, living with someone. But it's more of like, True. oh, we want new pillows for the couch. We both have to like them. It's not yeah. just me <laughs> that has to like them. <laughs> Um, but it's definitely like an adjustment in terms of wanting to spend so much time together, but also being okay, just being in the same place, but not doing things together. Like it's mm-hmm. definitely something you've yeah. got to get used to. Cause it's, it's kind of weird for us to be like, I'm going to go into the other room and do something. Cause you're so used to when you're not like living together, yes. dating, yeah. <laughs> being together in the same yeah. room, doing activities together constantly. Mm-hmm. Coexisting. Yeah. Yes. cohabitating yeah. Co- cohabitating yeah, yeah. A concept <laughs> yeah. yeah and it helps when you have that rapport with someone where it's like i'm going in another room not because i don't like you but because <laughs> i like you and this works <laughs> we can be in separate places and it's fine um and it takes sometimes a little bit of getting used to that i think because yeah it's it's a weird transition from going like we each can go back to our own places and then suddenly it's like I'm going to just go in the other room. Yeah. See, uh, what you'll find is that a lot of people like their alone time. And yeah. It's not necessarily like an insult to be like, yeah, I want to go spend some time alone playing a video game or watching yeah. a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's healthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is. Totally. It is. Especially oh, in should... quarantine. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, uh, I'm going to segue. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Segue. Boop, 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 so no i don't have a smart segue it's fine um uh erin i'd like for you to talk about blake oh yeah so uh uh our favorite cat girl it's her birthday today (gasps) oh Oh, yeah and we have um the pre-orders for the nindoroid is up oh my gosh and i believe so cute uh a t-shirt and a mug for her birthday, like at the RT store. What? Yeah. Oh. Exclusive new merch. Oh, dang. I it's, uh, yeah, I think it has like some like Zodiac yeah, design on it too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's done so by cool. uh, fan favorite Mojo Jojo. Oh, yeah, that's their, their Twitter name. Oh, how so cute. So, yeah. She's a Capricorn. They're she right. is. Yeah, we were having a discussion what she would be <laughs> what she is. Yeah. podcast or before this More like Catricorn. Like... Oh. Yeah. Ooh, okay, that was kind of good. Oh, <laughs> Isa just stares at the camera. No, there she is. Oh, oh wow. Oh, me okay, out. so yes, Capricorn confirmed. Capricorn, yeah. I like Capricorn how we kind confirmed. Of just looked at the shirt yeah. before this and been like, oh yeah, Capricorn. I think <laughs> it is guessing. a full cu- like that's got to be the cusp. I don't know what the actual Aquarius day starts mm-hmm. on, me but too. it's it's just got to be twenty something. It's yeah. probably like mid twenties, like twenty second or twenty fifth kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. I want to call out the store description on it where they said, we thought about inserting a goat joke here, like G-O-A-T, but we figured it'd be too Capricorn-y. Ah! Okay. That's pretty good. Good job, store team. Yes. (laughs) I want to call out, um, just related to... uh, because you called me out for my face, Hannah. (laughs) There was a meeting meeting I had with... um, uh oh damn it was uh all oh, right it was carrie and miles um and i think carrie said a pun joke and miles laughed really hard as he normally does and <laughs> i i didn't i kind of just stared at the camera like i normally do mm-hmm. and um i mentioned <laughs> carrie <laughs> I I heard you. I just didn't laugh. <laughs> um, I think Miles just started laughing because I was like, no, 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 it's fine. You guys are funny. And he goes, and Miles just goes, I think you guys are funny, but you need to be put in your place. <laughs> Whoa. You have to know there's a limit to there's what limit. I will tolerate. <laughs> and I was this like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, man, that's oh, amazing. I that love that. Yeah, you know you got you. real friendships, though, when people could call you out on stuff like that. Oh, like, yeah. That's, those are the real reels. Yeah, oh, real yes. 
for Real sure. Real friendship is being able to bully your friends. <gasps> I'm sorry, <laughs> I just got way. I just got so distracted by your cat. So cute. <laughs> oh. oh, there he is. How am I supposed to focus on <laughs> anything? <laughs> oh, his tail. Yep. That is oh my God, classic. I could classic watch that Lucas. all day. I'm sorry. So cute. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> oh my gosh. But before we start recording, um, I don't know if I mentioned it before on this podcast, but whenever I'm in a meeting or in a in this podcast, um, he thinks I'm talking to him. <laughs> he wants attention, so he'll like wake up and like rush over to uh, come get some pets and some loving. It's like, oh, oh I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my I'm coworkers. I love doing some I don't art reviews will... right now. <laughs> I don't know if this will work for cats. But I saw this trend on TikTok that is so funny to me. It's pe- what people are doing it with their dogs, where they'll wait till their dog is like sitting on the couch with them or like right behind them, and then they'll call for their dog as if they're far away. And every video I've seen, they'll be like, "Here, Betsy. Here, come here, Betsy." And the dog will just be like right next to them, being like, <laughs> "Are you okay?" <laughs> like, what? They look so confused, and it's so funny. And maybe they'll work with cats. I don't know. But I want you to try it at some point. I feel like cats are like fools. Like, it, they're like, if you try out, try that with a cat, they're like, all right, they're losing their mind. Anyway, yeah. continue <laughs> about my business. I feel like cats are smart anyway. in the dumbest ways. It's true. It's true. Like, it ways I don't that you're like, quite, yeah, how to describe it. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Oh, God. But I love so that's Dogs are so good. Cats are so they're, good. Your cat is so animals. good. You don't, you don't deserve it. Lucas, you're a good boy. Everybody loves you. Oh my god, my heart. He's, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, whatever. <laughs> oh, no, I love so him. Oh. A little orange wow. boy. Oh, so sweet. So, that was a watch. good segue from Blake. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> Cats, they're great, aren't Cats, they? they're great. <laughs> All right, now give us notes on that topic that we just talked about. We'll yes. do it again. Or we'll <laughs> no. again. Okay, yes, yes. We'll improve. That's how the show works, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we were asking for topics earlier, and mm-hmm. actually uh, Hannah brought up a very interesting yes. thing mm-hmm. about fan fiction. Mm-hmm. So before we really go into it, I think it's common knowledge that I read fan fiction. I was a fan fiction aficionado. Um, yes. Was. What? Was. What what I, I don't read as much fan fiction anymore. It also oh, okay. directly correlates to whether or not I'm in a relationship. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've been reading a lot more lately, or I've been going back into it. So, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but as I said before, finding those things that I found joy in again when I was uh, before the relationship. Put uh, fanfic reading on your, in your calendar. Uh, <laughs> S- so I have to put in my bullet journal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask it, if you guys read fan fiction. I, like, what was your history with fan fiction? Mm-hmm. I can start. start. I can because I <laughs> presented the topic. Um, I definitely. So I was like, I still am, but I was a fandom kid. Like, I grew up um, in fandoms online. And so mm-hmm. fanfic was kind of just like a natural part of that. Um, so I definitely read a ton of fanfic when I was younger. Um, and it kind of same as you, I tapered off. I feel like when I was, well, no, I definitely still read it in college. I was just very overwhelmed with workload. Mm-hmm. But I think mm-hmm. once I had like a job as an adult, I was like, I'm going to lose my mind. So I had to focus really on, on work and not fandom stuff as much. Um, but now that I'm older, I'm more into, I'm back into fandom more and I haven't been reading fanfic as much, but this conversation that I saw that I was telling you about was what made me go, you know, I should get back into reading it because (laughs) it was a really interesting discussion, um, that I had a lot of thoughts about from having read it a lot when I was younger. So, yeah. Nice. Hmm. You're a fan of fanfic. I'm a fan fan of fanfic. fanfic. Yeah. (laughs) We have similar histories. How about Mm -hmm. you, Erin? Oh, so I'm kind of weird. I definitely do read fan fiction, but I feel like um, in grade school, like being in like an enriched or AP like English class kind of killed my joy of reading. (laughs) Um, So yes, I'm very picky when it comes to what I read. Uh, I usually only read stuff based on recommendations, Mm. Uh, usually my partner because they know me very well. Um, And I either will read all of something all at once, like, even if it's, like, a 50-chapter-long fanfic, or I just won't read it at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And, yeah, I'm very, very picky on, like, what it is. So I will partake occasionally. 
Um, <laughs> but it's definitely not, like, my go-to in terms of, like, fan-made content. Mm-hmm. Definitely uh, more fan art and fan comics and whatnot. Uh, Give me pictures. Uh, <laughs> like, Give me all the drawings. Yeah, a dabbler. Da- yeah, I'm a dabbler. I just like a little sprinkle, sprinkle of words. <laughs> How about you, Barb? Uh, you know, I've I've read some fan fiction here and there. Um, <laughs> I I feel like it's weird to say, but a lot of it, the, the majority of the fan fiction I've read has been about either me or characters I play because that is what. <laughs> oh, funny! I stumble upon the internet, or people link it to me, or or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I, I had never really been into fan fiction as a kid. Like, it was never really something I I knew about, really. I knew about MySpace and AOL Messenger, and that was pretty much it. Um, I feel like I, I don't know, I just didn't have friends that were into it or, or wrote it or anything mm-hmm. like that. I I love it. I love the creative outlet it provides for people. Mm-hmm. For me personally now, I just get wrapped up in like the actual story itself and like letting my own mind run wild with (laughs) stories Mm -hmm. that these people could go into. Uh, So I don't necessarily read what other people do, but if I really like uh, some type of book or movie, I might go try searching for some, get into it a little, dabble in it a little more, you know, see what's out there. Yeah. A winky Ooh. face. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Lenny face. <laughs> I just I just finished watching Bridgerton, so I'm like oh. real oh, you about up. Lisa and I were both talking about that <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> like, what is that? Ooh. I don't know what that is. Oh. You know? Well. It is. It Lisa. is a Vic- oh, what is it Victorian Regent? It's British, Regency. British? I think Regency. it's Regency. Okay. Yeah. It's, Regency. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it takes place in London for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. A period piece about this wealthy family as they're like uh dealing with this particular season is like their first daughter is dealing with trying to find a um a match uh yes. because as little women uh has proudly pronounced uh marriage is also an economic proposal so mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um it's kind of like oh what are the or they they definitely go more into the kind of the emotions of like i want to marry for love but um mm-hmm. There's also some, like, social, uh, I wouldn't say commentary, because everyone knows what they're talking about, but there's some social, a lot of social parties uh, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Costumes, really interesting colors. Um, They think the big joke is how everyone doesn't, can't tell, uh, can't tell the brothers apart. Oh my god, yes. (laughs) Oh my god, could they have picked three more similar looking white dudes? Oh no, (laughs) it's my god. And I understand they're like, genetics, and it's like, not clones. Not not clones. I was like, I literally don't know which is which at this point. Yeah. (laughs) Um, the big draw, Aaron, BT dubs, is that the show is essentially, uh, softcore. Um, (laughs) just, this is my impression of watching Bridgerton from start until the last episode. (laughs) <laughs> oh okay <laughs> mm-hmm. correct oh lord accurate <laughs> <laughs> like I, I felt like shy when Trevor came in the room and I was watching I'm like yeah. oh don't look, don't look. <laughs> yes like I should I am I allowed to be watching this in my own Christian home <laughs> is this on Netflix my Christian mind It's on Netflix. Yes. My home? It's on Netflix, my yeah. I think Christian. it's not. Is it eight, nine episodes, something like that? It's eight. Yeah, yeah. Eight episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eager. It's also um, a Shonda rhyme show. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, and they she was like, a... Netflix, you let me show stuff that I can't get away with on Grey's Anatomy. So let's do this. Pretty much. Because that, that was. Oh, go ahead, Barb. I was going to say, it, it also. it That show has one of the things that. I love but hate most mm. in so many shows and movies where you're just like, if everyone were just <gasps> honest with each other oh, and no. yeah. spoke to each other, this would solve so many so problems. Many problems. <laughs> Communication. Oh, it's so annoying because they even say, like, why won't you just talk to me? And they go, I can't. And it's like, are you and fucking like, kidding me? <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe they would understand if you did. <laughs> To be, there's um, a there's a question by I think it's Ace the Nerd. Um, oh yeah. Important question about the show or any show really is it gay? Unfortunately, not enough. In my not opinion. enough. Yeah. Um, the, wait, not enough. Like a sprinkle okay, of gay like, in like an yeah. episode or two. Okay, that's about yeah, it's it's like having rainbow sprinkles on top, but it doesn't really go any deeper. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough. <laughs> you think no, I honestly? Yeah, I thought there was gonna be more. Me too. Based off one of the plot lines going on, I was like, oh, yeah. is he Me gonna? Too. 
Sam's and then bro- unfortunately it didn't happen Same, that yeah. way yeah. Spoilers, or if but... like the younger sister i was like that would have oh been yeah it. yeah that would have yeah. been it spoilers y'all are writing your <laughs> own fan fiction right now that's what i'm saying <laughs> right now <laughs> could be <laughs> now i know my way in i know the pathway <laughs> bridgerton babe oh <Baby>. seven <laughs> <laughs> Daphne oh, doesn't man. get with the Duke. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that thanks for that Bridgerton talk. I've been wanting to talk about. <laughs> I've been educated. Uh, I'll talk about Bridgerton. Today. Mm-hmm. With anybody. <laughs> I don't have anybody to talk about Bridgerton with. Okay, oh. no one on the RT podcast is watching that show. Unfortunately, why not? I don't know. <laughs> you gotta make I should, I should make Gus watch it. And you see should. I would love He'd probably to know. love it. <laughs> yes, he might. He or he might. would be so passionately angered by it, he would hate watch all of it to talk about <laughs> how much he doesn't like it. But you'd still have someone to talk about it with on the podcast. Very true. Uh, Very true. True. Um, before I go into the bid roll, by the way, just another note about Bridgerton is um, uh, the reason why I consider it very soft core is because they don't stop. Oh, <laughs> oh no, yeah. No. That, that's that's why Barbara was just drinking and just like, <laughs> like this, because you really expect them to cut away and then, you know, it cuts to a different scene. It doesn't. All or nothing, <laughs> just, baby. It just going. <laughs> well, especially like early on in the show, there'd be some like sexy scenes and they would cut away from it. And you're like, okay, yeah, like okay. Yeah. that kind of show. And then the further on in the show they get, they just keep showing more. <laughs> they just yep. kinda, yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Yeah. Oh, just, man. Go watch it if you want like a good eight hours of being like, uh, if, of not thinking. <laughs> it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which we really need in our year of 2021. You're really just, it's, mm-hmm. it's aesthetics over everything. It's yeah. just like pretty people, interesting, interestingly ahistorical costumes. Right. Yes. Um, also like a bunch of very good looking people. Very beautiful and it's just people. Just like a very yes. like romanticized yeah. society yeah. and like all this stuff. Yeah. You know, it's just a fun show to get lost in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, I, we say I say beautiful too because it's like it's still mostly white cast, but you know there are some very handsome black people. In <gasps> oh, one in particular who I think should be the next James Bond. I think they're talking about. I've heard about. there's rumors <gasps> that he is going, and that would be impeccable casting. Mm-hmm. That would be good. Uh, mm-hmm. So watch Bridgerton if you want to uh, <laughs> foretell the future. <laughs> See where his roots are. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah. Hmm. Um. So just want to go into shouting out. Uh, thank you, our first members, for uh, supporting the site. Uh, did you, are you guys a first member? Are you not? You should sign up. Um, I thought you were asking us. <laughs> I know. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes I am. I actually um, am. Uh, just know that there's always a free trial. So if you guys want to try it out, you there's a lot of stuff, to, really good stuff to catch up on. Um, Ruby, you can catch up on Ruby right now because they're, they're about to come back. Um, did they get, did they come back already? No. Man, I am not February sixth, I believe. Okay, thank you. Thanks, bro. Thank you. That sounds <laughs> right. I believe it. <laughs> um, so uh but you guys can catch up on Ruby the most recent volume of Ruby before it comes back. Um so there's that. Uh Dead Little yeah. Roosters, that's a thing. Dead Little mm-hmm. Roosters is coming. Oh my <gasps> god. Uh as if you guys don't know, DLR is um the first episode is for the public, but everything else is first only. So if you guys really <laughs> want to see where this mystery goes, you guys should check that out. And really, it's a very, very good, very funny mystery. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very funny. For everyone in chat's going for so. Um, Bert, <laughs> appreciate this. Bert, Bert members. Bert, Bert members. members. <laughs> I feel like we're at the point where we have to permanently change the name to Furt. To Furt. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's. I think it's been decided by the by the people <laughs> by collectively. The, by the people. <laughs> The chat we, is so we into have to it. change it. This is, this is a democracy, and this is what we're <laughs> We're going to start a petition from yeah, exactly. inside, from the inside, <gasps> oh, true, exactly. and then it's going to change. We've toppled the patriarchy, and now we're coming for the first minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that. So we do want to wrap around to our fan fiction talk. Yes. Um, yes. Hannah, could I throw mm-hmm. to you about why yeah. this came up on your radar? Yes, it came up on my radar because I follow a lot of, I don't, I, I don't use my Twitter very well. I don't know, how, like, I'm still not that great at Twitter. But I, fo- so I'm not engaged in a lot of fandom discussion, but I follow a lot of people who talk about fandom. And um, I saw a lot of uh, people talking about this, like, particularly 
uh, egregious fan fiction take, um, mm. which was, uh, to paraphrase, it was essentially saying that um, why would anyone who is an aspiring writer pursue use their time for fan fiction when it's a when it's a form of the art that actively makes you a worse writer was the take what? um Ooh. yes they it was basically saying that fan fact fan fiction is a lesser form of writing um and there were a lot of people talking about that and and i think i showed you like one of my favorite tweets i saw in response to that was kind of like comparing fan fiction to an artist like keeping a sketchbook mm -hmm. um the work in that can be very varied in terms of how much effort energy um artistic ability is put into it but it's a how you practice it's an avenue for you to practice but also a lot of it can be extremely good um mm -hmm. and it's just also a, a it's also a different means of they didn't get into this but it, you know it's a different means of distribution um mm -hmm. and for me there's a lot of conversation around um like access you know to how mm -hmm. people are able to distribute their work or how they're able to access platforms to um share their writing mm -hmm. and uh yeah it was just this very interesting conversation around fan fiction that i i certainly did not agree with that take um, I've read extremely well-written fan fiction, and I've read extremely terribly written published fiction. <laughs> yeah. Published fiction. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, there's a real, there, there's, you know, a real um, mixed bag, I would say. Um, sort of paint with a wide brush and say, fan fiction is bad, TM, um, <laughs> was an interesting take to me that I did not agree with. Um, and I even mentioned to you in our early discussion, that I'll stop ranting, but like, that to me it's interesting a lot because there was also conversations around like romance novels recently um, yeah. that came back into a lot of public discussion because Stacey Abrams uh, writes romance novels. A lot of really successful people either as a side pursuit or have come to it later in life um, write romance novels and it's almost always women and um, things like fan fiction and romance novels and rom-coms as films are mm. traditionally more media that's created and consumed by women. And so that mm -hmm. plays into it a lot. So it was just a very inter interesting discussion that I was curious if you guys had much experience like reading fan fiction or consuming fan fiction and uh, how you'd feel about that take. Because I, I saw a lot of great discourse around it and discussion around it. Ooh. And I was like, what a wide brush to paint with to yeah. say fan oh, yeah. is bad, period, the, end of story. Because, yeah. That, that was such a spicy take, just my <laughs> yeah. first, first reading the it. They said, like, the yeah. audacity. The, them going, like, fan fiction is a lesser form of writing. I was like, whoa! Whoa, yes. man. Jeez. Like, there's what is their huge... argument? Because, like, you're not coming up with the characters yourself? Like, what is the argument? I, I don't even Basically, know that they gave, yeah, that much nuance so to their argument. I, there's been, like, this whole subsection of, I think, like, creators, especially writers, who have kind of, like, said no to fan fiction or have, mm -hmm. like, kind of talked down on it. From what I remember, I'm, I'm trying to remember, correct me if I'm wrong, everyone, or if you've heard of this, including you, chat, but, like, I think Anne Rice. Yeah, that was what um, I was going to mention. Oh, yes, she's very okay, adamant yeah. about not wanting not fanfic using, of yeah, vampire. She yeah, she will, vampire. like, do ceases wow. and desists mm -hmm. on, like, people who are just writing fan fiction for her, for her characters. Um, like, long history mm -hmm. of um, people who don't necessarily like that, and they're published authors with, like, high esteem, you know, um, I think J.K. Rowling used to be totally okay with fan fiction until she decided to change her tune, as we all know. Um, so <laughs> out herself as a horrible person. Yeah. Yikes! I think, <laughs> I think the um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yikes. The writer so, for I'm Chachi. <laughs> the writer for Brokeback Mountain also is very anti fan fiction, if I remember. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Man, it's so confusing to me because, like, I'm not a writer, but if I were. I would be so honored and humbled if people liked the characters in the story and the plot so much that they wanted to expand on it and they wanted mm -hmm. to like explore other avenues for these mm -hmm. characters to explore. I don't yeah. know. Like to me, that's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I think you're definitely on like that side of like fan fiction is totally okay. Um, yeah. I think Hannah, the person who you sent uh the twitter thread of with that really mm -hmm. hot take um <laughs> they were saying something along the lines of i think one part of part of their argument is that fan fiction is lesser because it's kind of still like 
it, it it's like I'm thinking of it as like kind of a hierarchy thing. If you're mm. if if you're contributing to something that's already kind of like low tier, quote right. unquote. And this is how I p- thought of it in my head. If you're thinking about if you're contributing to something low tier, then you're just another consumer. Like you're not really creating your own ideas. So therefore mm-hmm. it's lesser. And that's their I think that was part of their argument as to why fan fiction is mm. like yeah. why they considered it that way. Oh, that was a hot take. Um, <laughs> it's so spicy, it's guys. Spicy. It's so milk. it's mm-hmm. just oh man, I need I need something. Um spicy. So spicy. It's mm, well uh, I guess uh, it's safe to say we're all pretty we're all pretty great with fan fiction. We think it's a good thing. Yeah, and I think like all things, there's like all things, there's kind of the layers of of moderation and expectation, right? So like I think there's always going to be. I saw some people in chat saying, you know, what's important is also um, tagging fanfics with things, making sure that oh, yeah. I, I would argue there's more mm-hmm. accessibility in fanfic than mm-hmm. there is in uh, mainstream or traditional publishing because many books don't come with the variety of trigger warnings that you can add to mm. fan fiction. So um, there's that, which I actually think is very helpful and accessible. Um, but I also think there's varieties of difference in, you know, I think if it's, I don't, that's such a can of worms to get into, like <laughs> writing about real people versus fictional people. Yeah. yeah. I think there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of nuance there. Yeah. Um, but I do think writing about fictional worlds and fictional characters that you're really um, interested in, like for me, I read a lot of Marauders era mm. Harry Potter oh, yeah. stuff because I loved the concept of the Marauders and JKR, she who must not be named. Um, <laughs> never pursued that really in any of her peripheral materials. And I was like, I would have much rather a prequel about the Marauders than Fantastic right. Beasts. Um, <laughs> or the hot take on my part, part maybe. Yeah. Um, well, spicy. It's yeah. True. And you should say it. I'm saying it. And so for me, I was like, I would much rather read about those characters um, and the world that, I'm, that I've am that i seen a glimpse of, but don't have that much information about. And people who are really talented writers also love that as subject matter and have written these incredible stories stories about them. Um, so that to me, I think to Barbara's point is like, it's really cool to get to dive into parts of worlds that don't get explored in the main, you know, kind of, uh, source material, um, and may never get written about. Um, but I also understand the reticence that some people and authors have about it. Uh, Mm -hmm. but I just think to say only bad writing is fan fiction. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you talking about? There's (laughs) garbage being printed <laughs> constantly yeah also it's like maybe a little sexist because i know not yeah. every fan fiction writer is a woman yes, but the yes, large right. there is definitely like a large demographic of women well or, and i would assume it's consumed largely yeah, by women also that yeah. so like right yeah calling it all probably, garbage probably and mostly, the yeah. people who read it as being garbage it's just like mm, yeah mm. I'm an English major, <laughs> bitch. Like, I read really great, great novels, and I've also read fanfic, and I've seen the variety. Mm. You're um, also a creative director. So, like, <laughs> yeah, so. You know, you know good stuff when it comes along. It's, I think yeah, that's part of your job. <laughs> I just think about, like, a lot of people don't have access um, to the ability. I mean, now self publishing is something, but, you know, I, I think also, this is also maybe a spicy take. Um, <laughs> I don't think all creative pursuits have to be monetized. I don't think you always have to turn something you're passionate about into a money-making avenue. And a lot of people write fan fiction because of their love of writing, their love of community, being able to share something about an IP or characters they're really interested in. Um, And so there's this back sort of gnawing oh god capitalist like subtext of like well if you're not getting paid to do it it's not legitimate and it's like maybe you just enjoy doing it maybe it's something people do because they like doing it and they have a career that also fulfills them and they do this because they enjoy it um so that's i think part of it too i do think there's this like well if you were really a good writer you'd be getting paid to do it and it's like well, then you I can don't. be like, well, Brad, are the photos you're taking in your photography class getting you money? That means you're not a photographer, Brad. 
<laughs> yeah. So I don't actually know yeah, anyone named Brad, but <laughs> as I say, that sounds like a familiar conversation. <laughs> and Barbara's coming from a very personal place with that. Um, maybe. Yeah, I do think it's. I think it's. You know, people can do. There's ways to pursue your art or things that motivate you, and anything that gets you being creative. Mm-hmm. I would argue mm-hmm. is extremely valuable because. Mm. A lot of times if I'm in like a reading slump or if it, I would assume if like you're an artist who's in an artistic slump, but you watch something you're really excited by and you're motivated to draw fan art of it, anything that motivates you to be creative, mm-hmm. excellent, amazing. Yeah, why not? We yeah. love it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know for me, like not a fanfic writer, but I definitely do a lot of fan art. Um, yeah. For me, like, like you mentioned, like it just gives me a reason to create because, like, I get so invested in these characters as well from, like, other IPs and whatnot. But also, like, I'm, like, a full-time artist here, art directing, and at the end of the day, when I'm doing art in my personal time, like, I don't want to, like, have to sit and think that hard about, like, my own IPs or whatnot. Uh, Mm. So, yeah, fan art is, like, a good way to, like, get that creative urge out and, like, Mm -hmm. not kind of feel like I'm wasting my time almost. Yeah. that makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my take. Good point. That's really good. It's a good take. I love fan art. I want to see fan art all the time. It makes me so happy. (laughs) Me too. Especially like I'm meme fan art. I love it. (laughs) I'm always blown away by fan art because it's like that took you so much time and effort and like so meticulous about the details and everything like that. I'm like I don't put that much energy into like getting ready in the morning and you did this whole thing for me to see because you like this character that i play or like whatever it is it's just like oh my god that me like that and cosplay to me are like two of the highest forms of flattery yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm. and agreeing with the chat pay artists so writers people who make art pay them i'm not saying don't pay them i'm saying people graphic designers yeah. For sure, do it. Yeah. But also, yeah. heck yes, pay and credit artists, yeah. writers, graphic designers, all of that. Because it's a lot of work. As someone who can't draw to save her life, I don't know how you guys do it. It's magic. It's straight up magic. <laughs> Seriously. It's always crazy to me when people are like, oh, I'll pay you with exposure. And it's like, all right, ah! you and your like 200 followers or whatever, I'm sure that's really going to put food <laughs> on the table. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like another uh, bad take. If If anyone says that to anyone you know, certainly either of you, send them to Barbara and I, and we'll be like, I will physically fight you. What's wrong with you? You want to see spicy? We'll give them spicy. Oh, yes. (laughs) The spiciest of takes, which is we will fight you, pay our friends. It'll be the kind of spice that gives you diarrhea for like another two, three days afterwards. Mm. Not the like, ooh, spicy. Persistent. Persistent. Yeah, persistent. <laughs> mm-hmm. The painful kind that. of stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. It's, <laughs> it's not well, good. I, I'm like, oh man, Hannah, you said so many good takes. <laughs> I know. Like, I agree with all of them. I don't know what else <laughs> to add because you said it so these well. These are some good takes. I'm like trying to think too, is like, what else can we really be said about like fan fiction? Because it's like, um, I want to. I do want to like clarify too. There, there is a certain point where um, BT dubs uh, don't. It's how do I put this? Uh, I don't know if you're trying to send fan fiction to a creator, and I don't know if it's like actually legally allowed sometimes. Oh yeah, so oh yeah, keep an eye yeah. Out on yeah. that, guys. A hundred percent. Yeah, we love fan fiction. <laughs> we just are not able to read it legally. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I could go into that a little more because yeah. I've had to Ooh, explain yes. this to some people. It's always like, it's such a bummer when, you know, we meet people or people send us emails being like, oh, I, I wrote a, an idea for Ruby mm-hmm. or I like drew up a character that I think would be really good for Red versus Blue or, or the show or whatever it is. And like as much as we love to see you guys be creative and to mm-hmm. see those ideas, if we then accept the idea and like take it and then look at it, enjoy it, whatever. And then later down the line, let's say there's something in one of those shows that happens to resemble or match up with something that you submitted to us. There could be this issue of like, well, did that person steal mm-hmm. the idea from that person? Right. And it's like mm-hmm. a whole complicated mess. Yeah. Um, so just know that we love and support fan fiction and fan art and stuff like that. But we usually can't accept ideas and stuff like that at Rooster Teeth yeah. for that reason. It's not even just the Rooster Teeth thing. Oh, I, know, I know like Marvel and DC are like yeah. super strict yeah. on that too. Like they won't look at yeah. like any sort of like pitch or anything like that. They'll just like straight mm-hmm. out like ignore you. So 
Yeah. Don't take it personally. It's, yes. it's literally yeah. Yeah. please. Reason. Yeah, that that's we'll such say a good I point. can't read this. Yeah. But thank you for mm-hmm. doing thank it. You. And it. Yeah. <laughs> it's um there it's it's such an interesting um line of like what the idea of intellectual property mm-hmm. um and like fan fiction and stuff like that, especially when you go into I think um other countries uh, oh, yeah. because they might have like different laws. For example, you know, um first thing I can think of is Japanese anime and manga copyright laws in japan are wildly different mm-hmm. um mm. fun fact though i'm pretty sure a lot of people who make doujin or doujinshi or like the fan comics mm-hmm. and stuff that are based off of like actual like anime and manga ip mm-hmm. um they publish them it's i don't know if it's necessarily for profit because it's mostly like self-published stuff yeah and they make it all themselves mm-hmm. but they're only really sold at like five ten american dollar a pop american dollars like a piece mm. and whether or not they profit that's that's another question yeah um i think when when you still when you start seeing like these huge amounts of like um i guess returns then maybe they start eyeing they start mm-hmm. eyeing them a little bit more but there's this whole culture in that country about making fan work yeah mm. um and how it's like i would i guess like i wouldn't say accepted but it, it's kind of just like commonplace especially when you're in the fandom um, so it's kind of interesting going through like Artist Alley um, in American conventions where yeah. to me it's like it's this uh, common thing something I grew up with that I think is like totally okay but then you might have um, uh, another like you might have some cease and desists essentially yeah. like there, there might mm-hmm. be some of these that pop up and it's just like a, uh, fan fandom fan fiction fan art um, <laughs> It's always it's always such an interesting thing for me to kind of wrap my head around in terms of like making it creatively, but also is it is it okay? Is it right? But then you have this other hot take of like it's it's terrible writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wanted to bring up there was a part in that thread where they called out like a couple of writers who turned from fan fiction writers to published authors. We're going to talk about Stephanie Newmeyer, mm-hmm. you know, um, E. L. James, Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Is that her name yes um, i believe so yeah yeah they they was stephanie Meyer? no i don't I, EL, I mean, let's go with el james let's go with cassandra clare because she yeah wrote, cassandra clare definitely was yeah and they became published authors with series and they're uh arguably successful um and the person who did the thread went don't talk to me about them because they're terrible writers and i was just like oh <laughs> <laughs> kind of a thing yes. I, I was like oh mm, maybe <laughs> lending Speaks credence to that so argument <laughs> and it's, it's such a, is, oh, mm, go ahead where, where who's first it's just like it, it bothers me so much in like the culture we're in now where people feel like if i personally don't enjoy this or don't find interest in it it's bad and no mm. one should like it like, I, that kind of mentality to me is so bothersome. Of I don't know where we lost the whole idea of, like, well, this isn't for me, right. so I'm going to move on to find something that is and, like, mm-hmm. not spend my time and energy shitting on it and the people yeah. that like it. Because mm-hmm. it's so common these days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah especially, especially if it's not hurting anyone. That's quite literally what I was about what to she say. Was say. I literally <laughs> started saying, especially if it's not hurting anybody. Yeah. If it is, then that's a problem. But if it's not, yes. To your point, yeah, it's just it's it's not for you, and that's totally okay. Not mm-hmm. everything is made for everybody. There's lots of stuff I've watched some of and been like, mm, I'm not enjoying this. I'm gonna watch something else. Yeah, I'm gonna go play like, Overwatch. I'm yeah. not gonna. I don't think I've waste ever left a YouTube comment. Yeah. Or like anything like that. Yeah. I think Especially the one time if I, I have... didn't like something. Yeah, it was like, where did you get your bookcase? I'm like a grandma. I'm like, I really like your bookcase. Where's that from? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been like, um, yeah? So this person uh, on this show was really annoying, um, and they didn't contribute anything to the conversation. So I just wanted to let you know that because my opinion is really important, and you need to know that for your, you know, your own sake. So thank you. Oh, Lord. I just don't get it. I still get it. <laughs> I'm sorry to get down a negative rabbit no, hole. No, 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 so no. triggered. I think I think what we're I think what we're getting at is like let people make the things that make them happy, and like if if an if an artist or a creator is making something for their own enjoyment that is hurting nobody, 
why do you feel like you have to qualify whether it's good or not? Because it's clearly not for you. I think because that's the bottom line of that take is that guy was looking at fanfic with a very wide lens and just going, it's bad. And the people who write it are bad. Like they're bad writers. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, <sighs> that. by what, what criteria are you mm-hmm. using? Why, mm-hmm. if it's something you don't like, like, let those people write their creative work in peace then. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, I just don't, I think it's like, especially with stuff that people are doing for their own enjoyment and to build like a community with fellow fans, it's like, let them have it, yeah. you know? <laughs> so again, to Barbara's yeah. point, if it is not hurting anybody, if it is properly labeled, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into the legal side. I do agree, I understand there's <laughs> like for, you know, for certain people, there are concerns around who's profiting off of work. I right. would also sure. argue access is a big part of that. Mm-hmm. How do people get to the point where they can profit off of their work in the first place? Not everybody mm-hmm. has access. Mm-hmm. Anyways, mm-hmm. I'm off my so I do, I do want to bring <laughs> up kind of one of the more complicated. I, I say complicated, but I think it's because there's there's been this like a, a the surgence of people who start discussing this um, in uh, recent times is kind of the idea of like the the distinction between fantasy and reality or mm. like what you're writing in fan fiction mm. is that what you're endorsing oh, um yeah. and i think it's a bit of I, w- I would say a touchy subject because i think a lot of different people have different opinions on it especially if you're if you're thinking uh not to mm, make fun or of ed- this or anything but if you're in the if you're in the mindset of what about the children then Mm. uh that's definitely a side of this topic because Mm -hmm. there is one of the biggest points of fan fiction is being able to write and express things uh in different ratings (laughs) so to speak (laughs) exploring your sexuality yeah exactly (laughs) which is totally valid Um, yeah, I my inside I wouldn't say inside joke. My uh, fun history is I like I got a lot of my sexual education from fan fiction growing up, and it was I'm not sure a lot of people did. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm, I can't be the only one, and I'm sure oh, a absolutely. lot of people <laughs> did. Like, yeah. but I think there is this inter- there's this uh, like I would say I guess internet group coming up um, in public spaces and in public internet spaces being like if you're doing this, then you're endorsing it. Or if you're like drawing it, or if you're writing it. And mm. there's been this huge discussion in these public forums about like, or I, I, I'll say discourse, you know, it's Twitter, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of like the whole, the tag that appears on archive of our own, like if mm. you don't like it, then don't read it. Yeah. Um, and so, I think that there's this like perception. I, I feel like it just needed to be said about kind of like there there has to be this n- distinction about like if you don't like it, it's not that you have to kind of go up to that person and be like, I don't like this. I think you should change because that mm. is that is that is rude. Um, let, let's be real. Mm-hmm. I think also there has to be a. There has to be a, hmm, I'm trying to find words because this is such a topic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah, like I really, we do a whole podcast on this I one. I threw an entire <laughs> Pandora's box into this episode and was like, let's talk about this in but an it's hour. I love it. good box. Yeah, it's a good box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good box. It's a tasty, <laughs> tasty, spicy box. <laughs> 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 I, I feel I just I just want to put this out there. I I will I am I will say I am firmly in the camp of yes. If you don't like it, you don't participate in it. I also think you should be a smart consumer. Yeah. Mm. That uh uh let's just put a real world example. This I might be throwing myself under a bus. If you're gonna come at Belle Delphine, <laughs> <laughs> that's just thinking about her. That was my example. If you're gonna come at Belle Delphine, it's like that's. There, there. That is her brand, and she's also right. very strictly eighteen plus. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if you're in that space, then uh, I think it, those people who are there, I think they they deserve to have their discussion about whether or not there should be like warnings of the kinds mm. of content she comes up on. But like, she also says herself as well as like, this is my brand. I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very vocal me. about it. Yeah. Yes. If you guys yeah. don't know, this is the stuff that I say I like. Well, and and so... that's that's something I actually really appreciate about fan fiction when when the tools are utilized. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. is much better about 
self-regulating and categorizing because if people are using the tools at their disposal you're actually getting things with tags that allow you to filter out things you don't want to interact with whereas you can buy a book based off of a dust jacket and have an assumption on what you're going to get but if you haven't yeah. Research the book in advance. Um, you know, you're picking it up at a airport, and you're like, "This could be good." There could be some real some stuff in there. You're mm -hmm. like, "I did not sign up for this. I did not know this was going to be in this book." Um, so I totally agree. I think a lot of it is you as a consumer, especially with media online like that. You're like, "What did you think you were getting yourself into when you you knew what this was? Hopefully, you knew what this was going to be. Um, not with fanfic, but like you're saying for stuff like that." Yeah, it's I feel like like. Oh, go ahead. Oh, like I feel like <laughs> fandom nowadays. Not to sound like a fucking boomer or something, but like <laughs> fandom is like it's not perfect, obviously. But it is a lot no. safer than like how it was when I was growing up as a teen oh, on the yes. internet. Mm, oh, oh man, yes. like mm -hmm. yeah, tags like were not a thing or were, were not used accordingly. And I've seen mm -hmm. some like fucked up shit. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> straight up. I still remember what the internet used to be like back in the day, where your parents were just like never use your real first name don't even tell them what country <laughs> oh, you're living in now people are like here's where i grew up here's the place i go get my coffee every morning here's this like here's my school here's my age yeah <laughs> let me tour my entire house yeah you're like oh my gosh oh okay. no <laughs> yeah yeah it's a very very different world yeah. it is we all sound so old we're not that old <laughs> no, we're not. for the record Crap. i don't know like anybody like <laughs> as as I know myself, whenever somebody's like older than me, I'm like, wow, you're so fucking old. Even if it's just like a year <laughs> older. <laughs> so I try not now to I'm do afraid that to know how old you are. <laughs> I'm sure Aaron is younger than us. I try not to do that because I'm scared I'm the old person. I know I'm the old person at this company. <laughs> Hey, Anna. There's nothing wrong. We work There's with nothing Gus. wrong with you. Well, guys. yes, but honestly, <laughs> I feel like the sorry, I love you, Gus, but like you are the older one of the group here, at least. I don't think, you know. I will judge yes. y'all. How about Unless, that? you know, little do you guys know I'm actually 50 years old. And that's why I'm such a cat lady. And I've just, I've aged very gracefully. Beautiful. Well, we still, that doesn't change how we feel about it. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be forever enchanting. All of you guys are. Oh. Like a you fine know. wine. YouTube barb. YouTube aging barb. well. Oh, no. I'm going to, I'm going to melt like a raisin in the sun. <laughs> yeah, same. Oh, no. I have low, low hopes. We're sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this was a wonderful topic, and as much as I kind of threw myself under the bus with that Belle Dufine reference, no. um, no. <laughs> I think we should call our show. Are um, we done already? I was having so we're fun. We're done already. No, I know. It was so fun. Uh, this was such a wonderful hour. Thank you, Erin, Barbara, and Hannah. You're welcome, Isa. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having us. Having Thanks yeah. for hosting, Isa. I hope you guys had fun. So much. <laughs> We got to we got to continue our discussion at some point. So much I know. to talk about. We Honestly, could we could so do good. we could talk about this forever. We could. We really could. <laughs> we could talk about Bridgerton forever. Oh my god. <laughs> but yes. Pedro Bridgerton. Pascal. We didn't even get Pedro to talk Pascal. about. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. But they are not the video on demand to watch because someone you should watch is Dead Little Roosters, guys. I knew I yes. shouted out earlier, but just if you guys didn't realize, Barbara and Hannah are in And it. Isa. And, and Isa. Isa. And, and Everybody from me, I guess. <laughs> We're going to make a last audience. minute cameo for you, Aaron. Yeah, We're going to exactly. slip it in. <laughs> They're not going to even know. Yes. Um, the next stream to watch, according to my handy dandy chart, is Stay Zen with Kaden. We love a queen. Um, <gasps> And uh, if you guys didn't know already, uh, the streaming apps are also now available for Rooster Teeth, uh, Roku, Apple TV, Xbox, or Amazon Fire. Check us out. Wow. Incredible. Um, thank you, chat, for uh, the... Oh, it's not <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, there's a queen! <laughs> Stop it! I love that! <laughs> um, so thanks, chat, for interacting with us. I had a wonderful time looking through your comments. Um, Shout-outs to everyone, as usual. Um, and that's it. That's our show. So Bye much fun. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>